it is often said that a photograph is what you see, but artwork is what you feel. This video is about how to turn a photograph into a piece of artwork. I've loaded an image that a uh, friend of mine, Mark Whitman, shot while in England. And it, it's a very nice photograph, but I believe it has a whole lot more potential. So I've loaded the image into uh, Camera Raw, which is the precursor uh, editing system for uh, Photoshop. And we'll just go in and do some basic editing here. We'll take a look at uh, the overall exposure. I generally like to bring the highlights down pretty far and open the shadows and then go in and adjust the white point and the black point on the image. I like just a little pure black in the image and then I can bring up the overall exposure and take a look at adjusting the texture, uh, clarity, and dehaze kind of gives you, even though it, it's not a, an outdoor picture, it gives you a, a nice rounding of the tonal range within the image. This picture can stand just a uh, touch more vibrance and maybe uh, a touch of saturation. I'll go into the uh, optics and uh, always want to select remove chromatic abrasions on the image and we'll go ahead and load the photograph in Photoshop. And as you can see, we have a, a fairly decent image. Um, the image could be trued up just a bit. So let me go in and we'll kind of straighten things up just a touch here. Get the verticals where they ought to be like that. Now, my workflow starts with the plugins from uh, Topaz Labs. I use the Topaz Denoise AI, and I'll run that to take out any general noise within the image. Uh, it deals with uh, grain noise and uh, color noise as well. And we'll, we'll skip that update for now because that'll slow things down. And I'm going to select the uh, standard and apply that. They actually update these things on a, uh, a regular basis, the uh, Topaz software, and they're, they're fairly religious about it. So I've gone through the denoise and the next filter I almost always use is Sharpen AI. And that will go in and tweak the image and sharpen it for me. So we load that in and I'm using the automatic settings. Uh, it believes the image is uh, too soft and very blurry. I'm just going to leave it there it's updating the preview and it's going to show me what it's going to do with the image and i'll just go ahead and apply that at this point and as you can see up here in the uh, progress bar i don't have the fastest computer in town but it gets the job done these two steps are are pretty much religious uh, followings of mine when I go into processing any image. I always want to denoise and then sharpen. So the next step I'm going to take is to use 
Skyloom Software's Luminar AI. Uh, this gives me uh, some extremely powerful tools for processing images. And we'll load this up and take a look at what we have here. And Topaz, or this uh, Skyloom product is template based, but I very seldom use the templates. I prefer to go in and automate the process, or not use the automated process and go in and, and do all of the adjustments on my own. And as you can see, uh, one of the stronger tools in here is Accent AI. It goes in and it does a really remarkable job of pulling out the tonal range within the image. I'm going to up the structure of the image just a bit for a little bit more clarity. We'll go into color and I'll do my final uh, saturation and vibrance issues, see what I can pull out of these windows. Uh, I frequently use just a touch of detail addition into the image and there again you know picking up the details in the window there's a tool in here called mystical and it, it's kind of hard to explain what it does but just a very little bit of it uh, gives you kind of an ethereal quality within the image so I will very frequently use that. I go into the optics and I, I want to defringe the image to uh, keep from picking up uh, aberrations that I might have there. And one of the most powerful tools in, in this entire suite is the color harmony tool and that's where I end up doing a, a lot of the magic in the image. I can go in and the color harmony, as I move a slider, it, it uh, amplifies the color I'm moving to. And if you go on the opposite side of the color wheel, uh, which in this case would be cyan, it is reducing cyan content within the image. Uh, the magenta green slider does exactly the same thing. And I can take that to get the tonality that I want and yellow blue down here is these are kind of subjective uh, movements but I always do the uh, color balance first and I work from bottom to top and I'll come up and I'll look at the warmth slider and see if I want to take it any more into the yellow range uh, and the cool end, you know, do I want to go toward the purples or the cyans and get the uh, image where I want it? And then if I finally move up to brilliance and warmth and just kind of play with these sliders to get things exactly the way I want. Now, one tool that I skipped over earlier uh, is the Sunray tool and this particular image uh, can benefit from that particular tool. As you can see, we have very strong lighting coming in through this one window. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to place a sun center actually outside of the image and start bringing in some sun rays into the image and you kind of play with these sliders to get exactly the look that you want out of it. You can adjust the number of sun rays and just when you get it where you want it, you, you stop. So I've, I've got the sun ray effect coming in. I've got the image balanced out the, uh, the way I want it. So I'm going to go ahead and 
apply those to this image and that'll throw me back into Photoshop and I'll use the the very last uh, segment that I use in turning these into artwork so you can see the original image here in just a minute it'll pop into what we have just created so that is a very nice photograph but I want to turn this into a piece of art so I'm going to go into one more filter and one of the Topaz Labs filters, Impressions 2. And this is a filter that will allow me to turn this photograph into the equivalent of a painting. And there is our photograph and I have selected paintings here in the choice menu and for this particular image uh, I think I, I like the Edward Hopper image number or uh, variation number one and if I select the tools there I can go in and I can determine do I want a low number of brush strokes to to create a little bit more rough impression, uh, a medium number, or I can actually go into a, a very high number of brush strokes and that will create a, a, a very detailed image. I very seldom go up to the, the high end. I tend to prefer the medium or low number of strokes. One other feature in this software is texturing. And I, I have learned that you can end up with little white specks peeking through the image. I always select to show the original photograph through if, if there was a space that was not going to be covered with paint the way they have it. So we'll, we'll look at this one last time. Do I want a low number of brush? strokes or do I want a uh, a higher number I think I'll leave it on low and we'll go down here and accept that and that will bring us to our final image so that's the process for going from a standard photograph to an art print if I zoom in on this a little bit you can see that you know we're dealing with brush strokes and not necessarily fine pixels like you would see in a photograph so we'll wrap it up with that and I will list the uh, details on the software packages that I use uh, in the details along with this video hope you enjoyed it